How much money are you in debt? These are my loans. I definitely want to be Cinderella. I'm in. I'm all in. I will have kids one way or another. Are you dating anyone at the moment? Next question. <laughs> Sweep the halls, halls of the stairs, stairs clean the chimneys, and don't forget the mending and the sewing and the laundry. Sewing and the la okay, hey everyone, what is up? Welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a Q&A. I've done one more of these on my channel previously. I will link it up wherever. You guys really liked it and I really enjoyed doing it. Although I've shared my life on here for so many years, I feel like these questions are very specific. I can elaborate a bit more and just casually sit down and chat with you guys. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, my name is Rachel and I'm a fourth year medical student. Just applied into OBGYN for residency. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but I've basically been uploading vlogs every single week for the last Oh, almost four years now. And if you watch from the beginning, it is basically like a little Netflix series from what I've been told. Check it out if you haven't already. Subscribe, all of that. Let's get right into it. I've got the questions right here. Um, I said nothing was off limits, but <laughs> some of the questions were just not appropriate. First question, how did you discuss your social media presence in residency apps? That's a fantastic question. I had thought a lot, a lot, a lot about this. It kind of crossed my head even when I first started putting out videos because I was like, well, eventually I'm gonna have to apply to residency and do I discuss this or do I not? It could go either way. Programs could love it and support it or programs can hate it. And there are definitely people that love it and there are people that hate it. And so that's why I was very torn to include it. And I talk to many people like my mentors I talk to physicians I talk to other students I talk to residents and um, even when I was on auditions it was kind of like I kind of pushed it out there to test the waters to see what the response was the feedback that I got um, the, the reaction after all of that I was like well this is a really huge part of my life I feel that my content is very it's it's very safe it's very um, it is filtered you know like I'm not putting out inappropriate excuse me, I'm not putting out inappropriate content. There's nothing that I'm ashamed of. All of my content is just, I feel like it is more of an education category. Like it is entertainment, um, but I feel that it falls into like an education or lifestyle type content, which is, I feel like I'm positively contributing to the internet. I feel that my channel attracts a lot of different people of different interests. Like it's not always just medical students watching me. There's like nursing, PA, law students, pharmacy, veterinary, like all of that stuff. So I don't consider myself an influencer. I want to say that I like to inspire. And so if I can inspire people and show them my life and my and all the ups and downs and that helps someone else, then great. I feel like I'm contributing good stuff to the internet. I'm not ashamed of any of it and I just decided to include it and I kind of talked about it in that light. We'll see how that goes down. Um, but I can't, I couldn't hide it because if you look my name up on Google, there's a lot of stuff that's going to populate and it's like social media stuff and um, why would I want to hide that? Uh, I feel like if I didn't include it, people would be like, why are you hiding this? We found that you are like this person on the internet um, and that's kind of a red flag. So yeah. Anyways, next question. Rate first and second year of medical school out of 10. Um, 10 being the worst or 10 being the best? I'm gonna say 10 being the worst. When I have to put it next to second year, I'd say that first year was a six to seven out of 10, 10 being the worst. For second year, that was a nine out of 10. I'm saving my 10 for you know, something way worse. But second year, I feel like was a nine out of 10. I was going through a lot of stuff in my personal life um, and so that combined with a really rigorous program, with the pandemic, with boards and all of that stuff, it was a lot and it was very isolating, very, um, very difficult time and I documented all of that and you guys know it was a very hard time. I lost a lot of hair, um, I didn't look that healthy, <laughs> but we made it and third and fourth year are so incredible and um, it gets better and that's something I kind of talked about in a recent video and that's how I score my first and second year. Are you dating anyone at the moment? Um, next question. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. How much money are you in debt? Oh my gosh. You know what? I'm just going to expose. We're going to just look it up. I'm honestly not ashamed or embarrassed to share this with you guys because it is a reality that I have to face. This is a really big problem to be completely honest in the United States as far as I'm aware of. Um, but I feel that when the schools 
um, allowed like the government to step in to give these kinds of loans to students um, that they just hike up the prices. I do understand that we are investing in our future and we're getting really great education. We're learning stuff that a lot of people will never know in their lifetime and we are gonna have like really incredible careers. And personally, I mean, if it costs like 10 times more to go to medical school, if that new, if that secured my spot as a physician, then of course I would pay however much it costs because I can't see myself doing anything else. So this is the price I had to pay to <laughs> uh, achieve my dreams. These are my loans um, as of right now. Like I said, at the end of the day, um, it is what it is, and I'm not the only person in debt. Luckily, the government paid for my undergrad, um, so I like don't have debt from that. It is what it is, right? That's just like how it goes, which is so sad. What made you start a YouTube channel? I love videography, I love photography, and when I discovered editing, I loved it. And so I was watching a lot of lifestyle vloggers, or like they were beauty guru vloggers at the time. And I really liked the concept of sharing your life and just things that you do throughout your day. And I was definitely inspired by others to vlog. And then uh, since I love videography and photography, once I started filming stuff and actually putting it on a computer and editing it, I was very addicted to doing it. And then um, I was like, well, what kind of content am I going to put out? And it just so happened that I was, you know, a pre-med student going to take the MCAT, all of this stuff. And I was like, this is something I can document. Because to be honest, I've shared this in the past, but I like don't have doctors and stuff in my family. So I didn't know how to navigate um, med school or getting to medical school or anything like that. So um, I was like, well, I can document this process because there's not a lot of people on the internet or at the time that were sharing this process. There was just very few um, vloggers, like just like maybe a handful. But yeah, I was like, well, I could just document this process and help someone out because I was definitely lost during the whole thing. That's kind of how it started. I upload was uploading a, a quite a bit up to medical school and then I dropped that like my first week of medical school video and that video went off and it went like not viral, but it was just like got me into the algorithm and I just kept going with the consistency and realized the impact that I have or could have on people and so, um, yeah, that's why I started to make a YouTube channel. I can't help but feel bad about all of the family events I'm missing because of medical school. How do you do it? Um, I definitely resonate with this. I think it's just knowing that th this is temporary and I think that um, I'm very lucky in the sense that my family's really supportive of everything that I do and so they understand that I have these commitments and it's not always like something that I want to be doing like of course I don't want to study for an exam and I want to do like go to my like a birthday party with the family or go to some like family event but um, luckily my family's very understanding of like this like part of my life that I'm in and so um was it hard to miss these events? Yes, but then at the same time, I know that I'm working towards something like for my future and it is for my family at the same time. Do my best to make phone calls to my family, like especially my immediate family. And I know that this is going to be like this for very long, for like the rest of my life essentially, because as a physician, especially OBGYN, when babies wanna come whenever they want, that's kind of like the, the sacrifice that you make. Um, but I think that maintaining your relationships with your family members is really important. And then if you can go to those family events, then do it. And if you want to take the like night off of studying to do that, then do it. This is kind of a similar question actually by the same person, but are you ever paralyzed by the thought that everyone is living life uh, while as a med student, we are just studying all the time? And that, yes. I have definitely felt like I've been on the outside looking in at people living their life. People are getting married, they're having children, they're going to you know, big events, social gatherings, they're traveling the world, and here I am. I've been in the same city practically for the last four years, and w with a very short leash. No one forced me to go to medical school. I chose to do this. I chose to commit my time and my life to learning medicine and then being able to treat a patient someday. Those are the life choices that I made. No one's forcing me to still be here, but um, this is what makes me happiest. So yes, there have been moments where I feel like I'm missing out on life, like, and I haven't found a partner, like I'm not getting married anytime soon. But like, those are obviously life goals that I have. And so it does get kind of sad watching everyone else meeting those goals. But 
I have my own goals and priorities and becoming a physician is the absolute number one. As I'm doing that, my life will fall into, the, into place and the grass is always greener on the other side. And so I think this is like in a Justin Bieber song, the grass is like greener on the other side. Like that's what you always think, but it's actually green where you water it. So um, if you water your own grass, you're gonna have beautiful green grass. And so I cherish the moments that I have in my life and all the things that brought me here. And I think of what I get to do on a daily basis that not a lot of other people get to do, which is like learn, help people. I just think of like the silver linings in my life and I'm grateful for those. And so at the end of the day, don't feel like I'm missing out on anything because I'm creating my own really great, happy memories in my own lifetime. So yeah, that's it. My next question, how did you know which specialty was for you? I feel like I got very lucky with what interests me and that's kind of how I've always been. Like if I know that I like something, like I tend to know right off the bat. Like once we started learning about repro in the first year of medical school, I was just like, I'm in, I'm all in, like, this is what I want. And then, so I was like, well, I need to like actually, you know, learn more, learn the path part in second year and then go on rotations and make sure this is actually what I want. Nope, like this is it. And then every step forward confirmed that for me. So I feel that I got really lucky. I feel like it was a calling. I feel like I was always meant to do this and I was just, following my trajectory through life and I was gonna end up in this place anyways. Um, and that is also if I match into OBGYN, but you know, one way or another, I'm gonna make it happen, okay? <laughs> Even if I don't match this first time around, I'm gonna make it happen, I'm gonna be an OBGYN and that's it. Um, but then I have classmates who have no idea what they want and they still don't and they are dual applying for different residencies because they don't really know what they want. And that's okay too. I mean, you don't have to know, no. And ultimately, if you wanna just practice medicine, you can find a specialty where you can just do that. It, it fell in my lap. I didn't have to go out chasing, trying to figure out what I wanted. I had an idea at first. I was like, well, I really like surgery, but also kind of like urgent type of thing. So I was like, maybe EM, maybe surgery. Um, but then I was like, oh no. <laughs> this OBGYN stuff, that is, it's for me. So here we are. Did someone in the hospital ever yell at you? Um, I honestly don't think I've been yelled at. I don't think I've been yelled at before. Um, I've definitely been like, like kind of like not shoved, but like placed into position or like grabbed by the coat or put my arm like, you know, somewhere. And that's kind of like, whoa, like, okay. Like kind of like alarming, but um, I don't think I've been yelled at. Maybe talk sternly to, but I can't recall an exact time. And to be honest, if so, like it cl clearly didn't like negatively impact me that much. Um, it makes you correct whatever and you make sure that it doesn't happen again. I have seen other people been yelled at, like other medical students. And that's like, oh, I just wish I could take the heat for them because I don't like people being yelled at. So. What's the biggest baby and the smallest baby you've ever delivered? At the greater end of eight pounds. And then the smallest was probably like a little six pounder. But there's been like, I've delivered big babies. Like that's a, that's a tank, like this big old baby. And you're like, oh my God, look at this big old human. Cute little babies. I love them so much. How do you snap back into studying after feeling burnt out? This is a great question. Uh, I definitely remember doing a lot of this during first and second year. And the biggest tip that I have for you is to take a break <laughs> when you have burnout. I know everyone says this, they're like, take a break. I don't understand like how people push through when they're feeling so burnt. You've gotta recognize that you're feeling burnt out and then actually fix it and it's not with more studying. You need to sleep, you need to eat, you need to shower, you need to do those like normal human things and have a routine of like wellness. Burnout definitely happens because you're just overdoing it. So take a step back. The studying will be there for you when you come back, I promise. And so just turn your brain off, check out, and then come back when you feel better because you're gonna come back. You're not gonna just abandon your work. Um, it's probably not your personality type to do so and that's why you've gotten burnt out. So you will come back, just trust yourself, but also just take that step back. The second you start feeling it, just like, okay, I need to take a break. I'm gonna take the rest of the night off. That's okay, okay? So do that. How do you recommend prepping for being pimped on rotations? So the term pimping means that you're being asked questions by like a resident or attending and you're just put on the spot in front of everyone and you're asked like a specific question. In my third year, I didn't really know how to prep for being pimped. 
because I would just like kind of prep for the rotation as a whole and then just like see whatever came at me towards the end of third year and then definitely now as a fourth year, you anticipate what the questions are going to be. If I'm going in a clinic and I can see the patients that we have for the day and you know what the patient's coming in for and if it's a certain disease and they're gonna ask me a, like a certain pimping questions, it's very like obvious what they're going to ask. And so I make sure I like read up on everything that they could ask me. Um, and then especially for surgeries and stuff, you anticipate what they're gonna ask and they usually will. And that's just knowing the case well or the um, the procedure, knowing like what is going on and then know that they're probably gonna pimp you on anatomy. They're probably gonna pimp you about this, that, and the other thing. I kind of like write pimping questions for myself ahead of time and then I answer them. And a lot of the times those are the questions that I've been asked. And so it's just a matter of learning what is fair game for to be to ask a medical student and then at the same time like i've been asked questions where i'm like oh my god i have no idea best thing to say is that i don't know the answer to that i'll go look it up but just being honest being like i don't know that answer um you can try or you can reason with like your thought process or you can like offer that and be like oh well i don't know the answer but you know based on this that and the other thing maybe that it's this or um, it really depends on who's asking you the question because sometimes they just want a straightforward answer they don't want you to reason through anything um, so you either know it or you don't try to look at it in a good way it's good for your learning um and yeah this person i think kind of left out a word but they're basically asking do you ever wonder like how you're gonna find a partner and start a family you know as a med student or a physician and yeah of course i i like worry about that and all the time because i'm like well i'm i just how am i gonna do that because i feel like that is like another that's like i said a huge goal in my life is to like find a partner and have a family and all of that but i don't know and it's fine i'm very like happy and satisfied and fulfilled with what i'm doing and if i can share that with someone else great if i can't that's fine and that's like what what ended up happening for me but i will have kids one way or another i really don't feel that it's necessary to have a partner to have children and so um, I definitely would be into just like doing a sperm donor, um, doing something like that because I definitely want like my own kids. I want to see what my genes are like in like offspring and if that's like weird to say, I don't know. Whether or not I have a partner, like I don't know, but whether or not I will have kids, I definitely will have my own um, kids and so um, it's just a matter of like when the right time is in life to do that. Favorite procedure to assist on? It is definitely a cesarean section. I love C-section so much. It's the coolest procedure, like in my opinion. It's so quick. It is amazing the anatomy you get to see. Seeing the uterus, it's so beautiful. It's ginormous. And the fact that it gets so big, it's so fascinating to see every single time. The blood supply to the uterus is just like engorged with so much blood. It's crazy. Yeah, you get to see so much anatomy. And then the best part is that you get to get a little baby out of there. And I think it is the, the coolest procedure of all time that's my favorite to assist but definitely excited for one day in the future to not assist and be like primary so yeah if you could be a Disney character who would you be and why <laughs> well if you watched my recent video talking about OCD I definitely want to be Cinderella because of the cleaning thing so I've always <laughs> loved Cinderella because she cleaned so much and she got to like get down on her hands and knees and scrub that tile even though Lucifer came and put the paw prints of dust all over that tile sweep the, the halls, halls of the stairs, stairs clean the chimneys, the chimneys and don't forget the mending and the sewing and the laundry I definitely resonate with Cinderella have you ever felt queasy or faint while in the OR I think there was just one time in my life where I could remember um, and it wasn't even as a medical student. It was when I was shadowing as a pre-med. I was shadowing a cardiothoracic surgeon and they put something in the neck. And for some reason I was like, oh my gosh. Like it was like one of the first times I've been in the OR and seeing that I was like, whoa, like I definitely was gonna pass out, but I just went and sat down because I was like, I can't feel anything. I know that I'm white as a ghost right now. And so I sat down, I did some pedal pumps like, like this, going like this and getting that like pump, the venous pump back to your um, heart and brain. <laughs> so I remember doing that and then I was fine. That's the only time I felt like queasy. Do you count calories, diet? Do you worry about your weight? I don't, to be honest. I feel like I eat pretty healthy and I don't restrict myself with eating. I don't count calories. I honestly don't really weigh myself. I have a scale, but 
I don't really care about the number because to be honest, like I've always weighed a lot. And I think in terms of BMI, I'm considered overweight. I'm like five, four, five, five on a good day. And I, I'm weight, I weigh about like 150 pounds and like, I'm not ashamed to weigh that much. I'm like dense. I feel like I have more of a like tank type body. Like I'm not like this very like skinny petite model type person. I'm like dense. And so I'm not ashamed of how much I weigh, to be honest. Like I work out a lot. I know muscle weighs um, more than fat. And do I have fat on my body? Totally. And there are days where I feel like I look terrible. And to be completely honest, like the, the body standards that have been set with this day and age, it's really skewed and not very achievable for like someone like me. Like I physically cannot get that hourglass shape because I'm, my ribs are very wide here and I, I can't go in any more than this um like I have I do workouts for my glutes but you know I'm never gonna have like this ginormous Kim Kardashian behind and that's fine like I'm very content with my body um and although it doesn't always match the body standards that have been set by society right now I am content with that and I hope that if you struggle with like your body image or anything like that that you love your body like this is the vessel that gets you around day to day. Um, you get to live with this body and so just cherish it and be thankful that you have this this well body that you can move around in because like you see people in the hospital that are super sick or they're, they don't have their leg anymore or they don't have this or that or this doesn't function right. It definitely makes you cherish like the vessel that you get to um, live in every single day. Next question. Is it mandatory that your husband is a doctor like you? No way. I, I don't care what my partner does. Um, and I don't have any specific requirements for their profession. As long as they're a good person, they treat me well and care about me. That's all that I want. I'm pretty like low maintenance and I feel like that's not asking for too much. Next question is why you called off your engagement. I'm not going to elaborate too much on this, but I just want to say that I know people have like messaged me about this and you know, for advice. Um, if you're not happy in your relationship, be honest with yourself, be honest with your partner and let them know. Yeah, like if you don't want to be together anymore, you've tried and or, or like things are just different now and you don't feel the same, that's okay. And it's, I feel like people are really scared to end things and, and stuff like that. And yeah, it can be really sad, but have fears of being alone or never finding someone ever again. But if you're not happy, then why? Like why, what's the point? Like you're just lying to yourself and you're lying to that other person. That's not fair to that person. You know, things change, people change. You grow and you change. And if you're not growing together and if it's just not the same, like it's okay. Okay, last question that I'm gonna answer. Any tips for overcoming fear of failure? Failure or thinking that you're going to fail, you're putting up like a barrier for yourself already. Failure in my mind means that you're not trying again and you failed, you labeled it as a failure and that's it. So if you don't think about failure, you remove that barrier and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna just do this thing and if I don't do exactly how I want the first time, then I'm gonna just try again or and learn from my mistakes and try again. And then if I still don't do it great, then I'm gonna learn from those mistakes and try again. And so I think that every opportunity um, that you tackle these like challenging things or whatever it is that it's an opportunity for growth even if you succeed your first time like there's always something that you can learn from and do better the next time don't be afraid to fail because you're insinuating that you're not going to try again and I know that you will try again and you will go back to the drawing board and figure out what you need to change to do better the next time I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A I will definitely will do one in the future and have you guys ask me more questions again on Instagram so make sure you're following me there if you enjoyed it please give it a huge thumbs up comment down below anything you want a question that you had that I didn't get to answer so I love you guys so much and until next time take care of yourselves be kind to yourselves continue to work hard and all that good stuff okay bye. Well, I'm giving my best and hopefully I'll make it out of one piece